I feel like I'm doing a really big book haul right now, but I haven't done one since mid-November, so honestly I don't think I'm doing too badly in terms of buying books. Hi everyone, Rosie here. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. As you've seen, I've been buying some books. I'm going to make you wait until the end of the video to find out if I've stuck to my resolution of, well, resolution slash goal of only buying one book for every two books that I read. And in the meantime, let's just talk about the books that I've bought. First, I'm gonna go through pretty quickly with these ones because they're books that I bought for a specific video and either you've already seen them or you're going to see them, so I don't feel the need to like talk about them too much in this particular one. First, there is A Duke, A Lady, and a Baby by Vanessa Riley. This is a romance novel about a widow and her baby who she has lost custody of and her baby's grumpy but ultimately very good person, Guardian, and everything that comes from that. Then I also picked up The Devil in Winter by Lisa Kleypas. This is another romance novel, this time about a meek young heiress who runs away from her awful, awful family and convinces a notorious rake to marry her to solve her forced marriage problems and his financial problems. I talked about both of these books extensively in my trying romance video that I did back in February which will be linked up here so if you are curious about those or want to hear more about them check that one out. Like I said I've already made a 26 minute video about those plus one other book so I'm not going to talk about them more here. Then I also bought Le Parfum by Patrick Suskind. This is about a young man named Grenouille in 1700s in France who emits no smell but has a super smeller nose and where that takes him in life which is not necessarily where you would expect. I feel like I talked about this book in every single video I made for the entire month of February. So even though I don't have a distinct video about it, I'm going to link my February wrap up where you can hear more about that. Then we also have American Cuisine and How It Got This Way by Paul Friedman. This is, as the title suggests, nonfiction, am I right? <laughs> about American cuisine and how it has evolved over time and what various factors have influenced changes that we've seen from the colonial period to the present and then where might we be going next? I bought this for a buddy read with Kim of Bookmarks and Breadsticks, and we actually did a live show discussing it. It'll have been a week or two ago when you're seeing this video, but I actually just did it <laughs> like an hour ago when I'm filming this. The magic of booktube, right? So I will link down below the live show that you can go and watch and see the full review, because we had a really, really interesting discussion about it. It's a fabulous book, and again, just talked about it for 45 minutes, so I'm not gonna say much more now. Then finally, I picked up Au Bon Al, des Dames by Emile Zola. This is, I think, The Lady's Paradise in English. I actually don't know that much about this one yet. I haven't read it yet. It's a French classic and I think it centers around a department store that's being opened in Paris and everything that that's tied to in terms of changing class, changing economics, all sorts of stuff like that. It sounds really interesting actually, but I bought it because Pauline from Dancing Lawn is organizing a read-along of this book in April and I wanted to take part. I want to read more classics, I want to read more in French. This sounded like a book that I should pick up and I should read with them. Now I've also picked up a couple sequels which I'm grouping separately because I'm trying to read more sequels right now so I'm trying to actually track what sequels I'm buying. The first of those is Uneasy Lies the Crown by Tasha Alexander. This is the 13th book in the Lady Emily mystery series. I have no idea what the plot of this particular book is because I have not read the first 12 so I didn't want to look at the blurb of the 13th in case it spoiled something, but it's a sort of cozy-ish mysteries set in the Victorian era following Lady Emily who was married and then very quickly widowed, which didn't didn't end up being such a bad thing, I think, and goes into crime solving. I've only read the ninth book in this series, and I know, I know, it sounds absurd to buy the thirteenth book in a series where you haven't read the first, you've only read the ninth, but I want to read all of them someday, probably sooner rather than later, but I'm not positive, positive. and this one was on sale, so I decided to pick it up while it was, you know, three dollars, because I do want to read all of them eventually, so I know it's an irrational bad choice, I'm gonna justify it to myself. The next one is similar, although not quite so egregious, and that is the Witch in the Winter by Catherine Arden. This is the third book in the Winter Night trilogy, which starts with The Bear and the Nightingale. I don't know what this book is about. I didn't read the blurb because I haven't read the second book yet. I have not even bought the second book yet, but I know I want to read it. I know I am definitely going to get to it 
probably this year. And again, the third book was on sale, so I bought it even though I haven't read the second yet, because again, it's like saving like 10 bucks and I know I'm gonna read it. Okay, let's move on before I need to justify myself anymore. The other half of the books that I've bought in the last couple months are basically, I'm calling them because I trust your opinions. They're books that I have seen people talk about on booktube that sound awesome, that sound great, that sound like I wanna read them, so I pick them up. The first of those is People of Abandoned Character by Claire Whitfield. This is apparently a dark and tense historical mystery type book about a woman who marries a charming, wealthy young surgeon after sort of a whirlwind courtship. They go on their honeymoon, and when they get back, the Jack the Ripper killings start. She starts to notice that every night that there's a killing, her husband hasn't been home. So I don't know if he is the killer or not. It sounds like that's probably the plot of the book. I saw Lana talk about this in her added to my TBR video a couple months ago, and even though she hadn't even read it yet, it sounded so good that I just had to pick it up. I'm weak, okay? I'm very weak. If something sounds good and it's $3, I probably will buy it. Then I have A is for Arsenic, The Poisons of Agatha Christie by Catherine Harkup. This is a non-fiction book about the poisons used in Agatha Christie novels, and like, if that doesn't sound like something I am going to adore, I don't know what does. This sounds so good. Uh, this one was one that I saw on Pauline from Dancing Lawn's channel. She mentioned it in her omnivore reader tag, and it just, again, like, it sounded amazing. I added it to my wish list. A couple weeks later, it was $3, so I bought it. I shouldn't say that after each of these, because it's the case for all of them, honestly. <laughs> then I picked up Amatka by Karin Tidbeck. This is a science fiction dystopian book about a society or a world where if objects and things aren't routinely and correctly named, like the fabric of reality starts to disintegrate or something, I don't know, it sounds like there's a bit of an authoritarian government, it sounds like there's a conspiracy that's being covered up, it sounds altogether like a book that I would not normally read. So you might be asking yourself, Rosie, why did you buy this book? Well, Ziggy Willpower, and they and everyone else mentioned will be linked down below, uh, mentioned it in a vlog and they made it sound so interesting and so good that I had to get it and I had to try it and maybe I'll read it and I'll go oh right this is why I don't read dystopian or maybe I'll read it and go hey maybe I just haven't liked the dystopian I've read so far we'll find out. I've also picked up L'Elegance du Hérisson by Muriel Barbery. This is I think The Elegance of the Hedgehog. I think it's a literal translation in English. This is about a concierge in a Parisian apartment building who sort of fits the stereotype of that type of woman, you know, old, overweight, just watches TV all the time, very grumpy, but has a rich inner life where she's super into culture and art and film and all sorts of interesting things like that. And then a 12 year old girl who lives in the same building and similarly seems like a totally average 12 year old girl, nothing special about her, but has some intense stuff going on inside. And it's apparently moving and hilarious and great. I actually read the English translation as a teenager and I don't remember anything about it, so hopefully I will appreciate it more and get more out of it as an adult. We'll see. This one, I think Lana mentioned it back in like January, December when I was talking about my goals about reading more French, and she mentioned this is a French book that I think her mom and sister had read and really liked. I was like, oh, okay, let's give that a try. I liked, I think I liked it the first time, even if I don't remember it, so let's give it a try in its original French. Then I bought The Amberlo Dossier by Lara Elena Donnelly. This is apparently like 1920s spies in an alternate world steampunk type universe thing, which like, yes, I'm here for it. Katie of Katie Reads and Rants mentioned this one in a collab video I think she did with Brittany of Literarily Smitten. I will link all of these people down below again, of course. And it just sounded so good that I was like, well, of course I've got to put it on my list. And when I went to put it on my list, I saw that the bind up of all three books in the trilogy in like one ebook was for sale for like $3 as opposed to you know, $10 for each of the individual books. So I was like, well, I've got to buy it. I'm trash and I cannot resist that sort of deal. So I picked it up. Should I be buying a new series? No. When will I read this? I don't know. But now I have it, and when I do want to read it, I can read all of it. So it was a good decision. Just, just let me have this, okay? The last book that I have picked up recently is Mistress of My Fate by Hallie Rubenhold, which did everyone else know that Hallie Rubenhold wrote novels? Because I didn't until I saw her mention one of them on Twitter and was like, you write novels? Well, that needs to go on the to buy list. And of course I looked it up and it was $3, so I bought it. Um, <laughs> 
Uh, we've been over this. This is the first in a trilogy about a young woman who's working in 18th century London as sort of a courtesan, I think. It sounds like it's tied very much to the research she did for the Covent Garden Ladies, so even though I didn't love that one as much, it sounds like it'll be really interesting. And I do really like her non-fiction writing, so I would love to check out some of her fiction writing. Again, yes, another new series. Who knows when I'll read it, but I've got it now and I can read it sometime. I thought this was gonna take forever to film and that this was gonna be a super long video, but I've only been filming for 15 minutes, so this might be the world's most like speedrun book haul ever. I don't know. Let's wrap things up by talking about the stats that you probably haven't been waiting for, but that I'm interested in. So if you saw my 2021 reading goals video, you will know that one of the things I'm trying to do this year is for every book I buy, I have to read two books or I guess the opposite is a better way of putting it. I read two books and then I get to buy one book. Trying not to get to TBR zero, but just to not flood myself with three books more that I can read every time I read one book, if that makes sense. Trying to achieve a bit more of an equilibrium where I've got a bit of a backlist of books I wanna read, but not something that's growing exponentially, basically. <laughs> so how am I doing? As of time of filming, I have finished 32 books in 2021. When you're watching this, it will have been more because again, timing, but okay. Right now, in my time, <laughs> I've read 32 books and I've bought 13 books if you count the Amberlo dossier as one or 15 books if you count it rightly as three books. So I'm on track. I'm actually, depending on how you want to look at it, I'm ahead by a book. I could buy 16 books based on 32 read and I've only bought 15. So like, hey, this is going really well. And assessing it not just from a numbers perspective, but how do I feel about my book buying? Do I feel like I'm really deprived and I can't buy anything I want? Or actually it feels pretty good. I don't feel like I'm having to really deprive myself or limit how many books I'm buying. For the most part, I don't feel like I would have wanted to buy that many more books in the past few months. So I think it's a pretty sustainable plan going forward. I think I hit the nail on the head with not going on a book buying ban where I was going to get so frustrated and fed up that I fell off the wagon within like a month, but also it's reining in how much is coming in and making it easier to prioritize things a bit, I think. So on the whole, I'm pretty happy with it, especially since a lot of these books are ones that I've already read now. So they were ones that I bought because I wanted to do something specific. I read them, good. Like I don't, again, feel the need to get to a point where I read a book immediately after I buy it, but it is nice to not just have tons of new books coming on the bottom of the pile, you know, pushing things ever upwards. In the next few months though, I do want to focus on buying more sequels versus new books anticipate in my next haul which again I'll probably like another three months before I do another one but you guys will have to hold me accountable hopefully that one will involve a lot more sequels to series I've already started and a lot less first books and I've actually changed how I organize my wish lists in order to encourage me to do that more but yeah overall I'm really happy with this. I'm really excited about these books. I feel like this new method of book buying is working really well. And uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. What do you think I should read first? What have you been buying lately? How do you buy books? Let's talk about it. This is fun, right? I think it's fun to talk about buying books, even if I'm not doing it quite so crazily these days. And as always, if you like this video, please hit the like button down below. If you would like to see more of my videos, please hit subscribe and thank you for watching.